Hey, I'm Robert, Cooksaw Manufacturing. I uh, want to talk about some blade tracking on one of our sawmills. We're looking at our HD 3238 sawmill here. Uh, but these uh, principles, these adjustments, they apply to all of our sawmills. Um, you can also use them on another brand of sawmills. Um, the way we've got our adjustments set up, easy to get to, uh, easy to make that accurate. Um, but the concepts, the principles, they, they can apply to, to any band sawmill. Um, so when I'm sawing and the blade is not tracking right, um, what I'm calling tracking is where that blade is riding on our band wheel, what it looks like going across the roller guides, uh, that's the tracking of the saw blade. Um, so if I'm sawing and the blade's not tracking right, but I've got a lot of time on the blade, first thing I want to do is I want to take this blade off, put a new blade on it, see if it's consistent. I want to spend a lot of time adjusting my sawmill because I ran my blade too long and I've got some cracks in it and it's messing up that uh, that tracking adjustment. So let's get a, a fresh blade on the sawmill to start with. So there's a high point on that wheel to hold the blade in place. So that is a big benefit for having the steel wheels because uh, that is a machine crown. We're precision grinding these wheels, get a lot of life out of them. Uh, but that crown is what holds that blade in place. So that's the first thing I'm looking for is where the blade's riding at on the band wheel. What I want to see is the gullet, the low point between the teeth. I want to see that flush with that front edge. It can come out an eighth of an inch. So if I hang a fingernail on there, that's about what I'm looking for. Uh, so I want to see where the blade is on the band wheel. Another thing that has a big play of tracking is our tension. So when we put that new blade on there, make sure that tension is set. When we increase tension on the blade, that does bring the blade further out on the band wheels. Um, so that blade will come out with more tension and it'll ride back with less tension. So I've got to make sure that tension is right. If my tension's fluctuating, it's going to be real hard to keep that blade true. Um, so the tension and then the crown location, that is what is affecting my tracking. So put a new blade on there, check the tension, make sure that's just right. See where it rides on the band wheels. Um, on our mills, each wheel is adjustable um, and it's your left and right. Uh, so the three o'clock and the nine o'clock position and that tilt there is what's going to affect the tracking Not so much top to bottom 12 and 6 So we're looking left to right um, on the adjustment of our band wheels to adjust that tracking So I'm looking at it both wheels each wheel is individually Adjustable um, always want to start with the wheel that is uh, the worst So if this blade over here is riding out quarter of an inch that one is about an eighth of an inch. We can probably get by with just adjusting this one and it will affect that other side uh, when I make this adjustment. So on our tension system, we've got this half inch plate here um, and I do have a vertical hinge and there's a bolt top and bottom. So I can loosen these gem nuts between the plates and then get a, a wrench in. I use the box end of my wrench. Um, it's three quarter to get on that bolt. When I tighten these two bolts, and I want to try to keep that as even as I can. So if I go quarter turn at the top, I need to go to quarter turn at the bottom. But if I tighten this bolt clockwise, that will bring the blade back on the wheel. If I loosen this bolt uh, counterclockwise, it pushes the blade out on the wheel, pushes it forward. So that wheel is, or that blade is going to follow the outer edge of that band wheel. So if I tilt this, let's see here. So if I tilt it this way, the blade's going to ride farther out. If I tilt it the other way, the blade's going to run farther back. So that is the side that the blade's going to follow. Um, same adjustment on our drive side. And over here, I do have the belt guard has to come off, but I've got that same adjustment, uh, bolt top and bottom on our drive side. So it does make it get easy to, to get to. That is not a common adjustment. Uh, if I'm changing blade widths, blade sizes, I may have to get in there, but as long as you're staying with the same blade, shouldn't have to make that adjustment uh, very often at all. Um, but there are times we need to get in there and make that adjustment. So once I get that blade riding on the band wheels where I want, that's, uh, that's the first thing. So check our tension, make sure that's right. Get the blade riding on the band wheel we want using those two bolts on the back uh, to tilt that band wheel. That's what I'm looking for. Then I want to see where these guides are, um, our roller guides, where they're riding at on the blade. Best way that I've found to do that, the best angle is to get on the drive or the idle side of the sawmill and I can get down underneath and I can see where that blade's riding, gives me a better angle. 
when I put speed to the blade, it will change a little bit. So turning it by hand versus checking it when it's running, um, it won't change much, but speed will have a little bit of effect on there. So after I make my adjustments, everything looks good. I'll crank it up, let the blade run at speed before I go and lock everything down, double check, make sure it's where I want it to be. Um, but the blade to that back flange, let's see if I can get a little closer. I'm looking for a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. Um, I do not want the blade riding on this flange all the time. That's going to create heat. That's going to create friction. It's going to put work hardness on the back of the blade and it's causing them to break prematurely. So I do want the blade just off of that flange. Now, when my blade goes through the wood and I hit some resistance, um, that blade will push back. And that's what that flange is for. Keeps it from running too far back where it starts to twist on me. So it will come back and it will hit there. It's there by design. I do not want it riding there all the time. It needs to move back just a little bit because if you take that blade and it's flat and you start pushing it back, at some point it's gonna give um, up or down. So just a little bit of movement back when I hit those hard spots. But as I'm sawing, it should not stay on that flange. It should ride itself back out um, due to the crown of the band wheels. Now to make that adjustment on these guides, um, we've got four square head bolts on the back. These are pivot bolt top and bottom to set our alignment, so which we do have in another video as far as tilt using our blade alignment tool. But in this case, I'd loosen the top and the bottom uh, just to kind of free that up. And then this block, it's on a key back here. And that key, I've got some movement where I can slide it back into this tubing or farther out. So if I needed to, to push that guide back because the blade's hitting the back flange there when it's riding, loosen the two bolts, push the block back in, retighten them. As long as I don't mess with the opposite bolts, the other side and the bottom there, I should not have to worry about realignment. If I'm doing precision cutting, that alignment is key. I'm always checking it after the fact either way. Um, but that is my adjustment for that guide, moving it in and out. It'll slide in and out of this tubing. And I've got a good bit of um, variance in there for how far I want to move it if I'm changing blade sizes or whatnot. Um, so checking the tracking on the blade, I'll start with a new blade. If the blade's got cracks in, I hate to adjust the machine. Start with a new blade. Check the tension. Look at the position on the band wheels. I'm doing that first, and then I bring the roller guides to match where that blade is going to sit. Thanks for watching our video. I hope you found it helpful. If you've got uh, additional questions, you can always give us a call, shoot me an email on it. Um, but if you did find it helpful, if you would like, subscribe, comment, um, and anything else you're running into, you'd like to see a video on, just let us know.